Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to Camwings Let's Plays. How's everybody doing tonight? Sorry for the late start. I had to check with a client about a certain game, <laughs> which I can't say on the air. But um, let's just say that the game that I was going to stream tomorrow morning will be changing to a different game. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, uh, because reasons. But anyway, tonight we're going to be looking at the Resident Evil characters from Resident Evil 4 and 2, uh, Leon and, I believe, Claire. So, Leon will be first because Resident Evil 4 dropped today. I have no idea where Claire is now. Uh, where are you? Nope. She is... Yeah. Claire Redfield. There she is. RE2. Okay. <clears throat> so, if you guys want to jump in, all that fun stuff, uh, we'll be playing for... I don't know how long we're going to be going. And then tomorrow's streams on this channel will be more of Dragon Ball. And then uh, VG Shine's Ultimate is tomorrow. There will be no Ultimate on the 01 channel tomorrow, unfortunately. That is going to be moved. Leon S. Kennedy. Now, I actually have not played uh, the new Fortnite yet, so this is all new for me. But anyway, I don't know if Leon is still in the item shop or not. I don't believe so. Let's see. I think he's gone. Oh, they're bringing back, uh, what's her name? Is, oh, Leon and uh, Claire are still here. Okay, so here is Leon S. Kennedy. He looks okay. Uh, I would appreciate if he looked a little bit older and more gruff. He kind of looks like a Korean pop star a little bit. A bit of a pretty boy there. <laughs> you got the um, case... What are you buying? You've got Claire Redfield, who actually looks a lot more mature and older than Leon. She's supposed to be younger than Leon, which is weird. Leon looks like a teenager. She looks like she's much older, more mature. You've got the keys, Raccoon City Survivor set. You've got Leon's combat knife, and you have Gasp and Umbrella. <laughs> so... The characters can be bought in a bundle, or they can be bought separately. So, about fifteen hundred a piece separate, and that's it. That's all. So we're gonna start with Leon because his game just dropped today. So if you guys want to get in, I don't know if Amber actually. Nope, it is public. Okay. Zelda, I just fed you, so you can't be acting weird, okay? Um, RE4 remake came out today. Um, some people had early access. I had early access yesterday, but I was helping Amber get ready for her trip. And by the time that I actually had a few minutes to myself to, you know, stream the game if I was going to, I fell asleep uh, on the couch. And then, um, woke up, edited some Dragon Ball stuff, and uh, saw Amber before she left at 5 in the morning. And then I went upstairs around... I don't know, I think it was like 6.30 after I uploaded your YouTube short and all the other stuff. And then I woke up uh, just in time to set up the premiere for um, the Dragon Ball vs. video. So. Zelda, take a hint. I don't want you to jump on the laptop, yo. You're going to take a hit? Okay. Alright, so we got some people in. Uh, let's get to it. Are you guys playing Fortnite with Luke? I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, there's people here playing. All right, let's ready up. I have not seen the new Fortnite, so I'm curious to see what's changed, what's new, all that fun stuff. And it looks like Amber bought me a battle pass or something. I don't know. <clears throat> so it should be fun. And then uh, tomorrow morning... If you guys want to see, uh, I will be streaming RE4 for Capcom, because that game is brought to you by Capcom. Meow. Come on, Zelda, chill. Chillax, cat. Uh, your first like goal is 100 likes, so let's get up to that if we can. And we're just waiting for the game to kind of, like, bring us in. Yeah. I don't want you climbing on the laptop. I'm gonna squirt you with the uh, squirt gun. If you do it. 
No. I'm actually kind of terrified about looking at the Dragon Ball Z thing again. I had my, uh, my Saiyan pride was wrecked. Absolutely destroyed. So apparently, what I was supposed to do, according to some people who contacted me, it was a survival mission. So I was supposed to just, like, let Frieza and Goku go through all their talking points. And, uh, eventually, it would get to the point where Krillin died, Piccolo would come in, and then Goku would go Super Saiyan. And it would be a much easier fight. You can beat Frieza the tank, um, but they recommend, you know, stalling or dragging it out until things happen. And of course, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna fight, obviously. Zelda, don't. Do it. There you go. That's what you get. I told you not to do it. Did you listen to me? No, of course not. Why would you listen to me? Why would you listen to me? I warned you. And you didn't listen. She's fine, I just used a squirt gun. Hugging Thanos? Sure, why not? I would look at the game tonight, but I want to sleep, so I'm not doing RE4 after this. I will do it in the morning around like 9 or 10 in the morning tomorrow. I'm not, 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 uh, not doing that. So what's going to happen is uh, around whatever time this stream ends, I'm just going to end up replacing the stream that's set up, change the picture, change the tags, uh, and have that become an RE stream. Because I'm just too lazy to start a whole new one. Leon with lightning powers. Alright, so the map doesn't look too different. Where's this uh, new Neon City thing? Oh, that's it right there, huh? Leon as Captain America. Let freedom ring. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you guys having a good night. Ready for just kind of a chill stream playing some Fortnite. With Leon S. Kennedy and eventually Claire. Hey, what's going on? You want me to pick up the sword? Why? Okay. Cool. I don't think I'm gonna make it, but... Whoa! Now I see the Neon City. That's cool. Oops. Almost reminds me of that Ryan Reynolds uh, movie. Free guy or something like that, or or guy. I, I don't remember the name. Of it. it was a cool thing, though. I thought the movie was actually kind of fun. You want me to drive? Oops. Oh, I just press up to drive. Okay, I was making things more complicated than they need be. You and Amber are my favorite YouTubers. Thank you, Jamari. Whoa! Who's the dude following me? Motorcycles. Nice. Very nice. So how many years have they had vehicles in Fortnite now? Are we going on two or three years with the vehicles? Started with the boats, and then it went to the cars. Then the uh, dirt bikes was last year. Now we got straight up motorcycles. Ooh. Oh! Almost three years of the bikes now, wow. Whoa. Where 
Wherever you want to go. We're glad you've been a member for six months. We appreciate it, Jamari. Thank you. All our fans are awesome. Our members keep us uh, on the air, though, with uh, revenue. Or, or fan funding revenue. Something like that. Alright, nice job on the 70 likes, guys. I know it's kind of late, uh, but uh, it'd be awesome to hit 100 likes. Oh, let's, let's not, uh... Yeah. Uh, are you... Are you trying to blow that up? I mean, if you want to. Oh, whoops. I didn't, I didn't mean to do this. But... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so what new guns did they give us? Okay. I was uh, expecting a big kaboom. No earth-shattering kaboom. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, a little disappointed there. You would think, like, a uh, giant explosion. My own bike. That's very nice. What is that? That's new. Hello. Thing looks like an Autobot. Kind of. Okay, so what are the controls for this? Wow, that is a cool looking car. Who would want to see a Transformers uh, collab with Fortnite? You think that'd be kind of cool? I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. Because this car reminds me of, like, Jazz or Prowl. Something like that. Whoops. Sorry, I was doing a... I was kind of messing around with the car, and then I broke it. I broke the car! All right, let's roll. Da, 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 da. Fun times. So, do they have any uh, zombies or anything in um, Fortnite for the RE characters, or no? Just that, like, one neon city or something like that, and that's pretty much it, right? And for the most part, ow, Fortnite doesn't really look all that different than what it normally does. I mean, it's got a nice new paint job. Road looks good. But the, that city that we were in wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be. Oops. Oh, he was trying to get on his bike. I'll take that. Woohoo! Got your bike! Oh, yeah! Aha! Whoops. Probably gonna break this poor bike. Of course I am. Whoops. Oh, 
Oh, I burned up all my fuel already. So how loud is the game? Levels look okay. Is that Chio on the back? Yeah, it is. Ah. Bro. And the Autobot car is still surviving. Yeah, zombies are in Fortnite uh, October stuff. Yeah, you're right. You can kind of ca uh, call them zombies, though. They won't really like that. Nice. Hmm, what else to stream tomorrow? Maybe Fire Emblem Engage. Maybe some more Metroid. I don't know. I decided. I have not decided. I definitely don't want to do Resident Evil at night, though. Nothing against RE, I just, I'm not a big fan of horror games, especially at night. Alright, so we're about, uh, we're close to 80 likes already. Good job, guys and gals. Keep going. Oh, well, this car has seen better days, hasn't it? Did they give Leon other costumes in this game? Like his, um, his leather jacket look or anything like that? Or he just has his without the jacket look? We're going to see the new John Wick movie tomorrow? Nice, have fun. They didn't give him his RPD uniform either, and no jacket? I mean, Leon's, like, leather jacket is iconic, though. That's his look. This is more of, like, his later Resident Evil, you know, look. Because he wears his jacket for most of the game in RE6, or RE4. Oh! Holy cow. You accidentally sent some message. No worries. Ah. Mm. 
score is 77 to 98. Yeah, that was that was kind of a slaughter. Ouch. Zelda, what are you doing? Creepy dude. Wow, I can't believe they didn't uh, do any other look for Leon. That's messed up. You can't ignore the leather jacket look. That's iconic. Really? No other styles? Wow. Messed up. Oh well. That's a bummer. They gave Claire... Oh, that's not Claire. Where's Claire? Did they give the other, uh... Wait. Yeah, they gave Chris his other ones. Look at that. There's older Chris. Younger Chris. That's messed up. They did the same thing for uh, the other girl, right? Yeah, Jill. Jill probably has other costumes, doesn't she? Yup. Jill had two costumes. Wow. Jill stars. Uniform. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. What you doing, Capcom and Fortnite? Really? That's messed up. That is kind of messed up, you gotta admit. That's that's a little weird. Somebody's playing as a Ghostbuster, that's fine. Zelda! What's doing, weird cat? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. They gave Chris and Jill alts, but they didn't give Leon and uh, Claire alts. That's weird. His jacket is under a certain copyright? Are you serious? Wow, I didn't know that. I'd like to hear more about that. Alright guys, ready up when you get a chance. I mean, that would make sense. I have seen other, like, uh, Leon S. Kennedy, like, um, crossovers where he didn't have his jacket. It makes a lot of sense if it's tied up in some type of copyright red tape stuff. Yeah, it would have been cool to have him in the officer uniform, yeah. Yeah, I agree to that. It's because the jacket is under a company's copyright? Wait, does Leon wear the jacket in the new RE4 or no? Because it's based on an actual Japanese coat manufacturer. He does, but only for a short time. Ah, oh, that's messed up. Alright. Well, this time I want Leon to explore the city, so that's where I'm going to be going. Because I haven't really gotten to see a lot of the city. Weird fish man. Goat person. So that's the city, huh? 
Let's go. Alright guys, you're close to uh, 90. Keep going. R.I.P. writes to Leon's jacket. Oh, Fortnite doesn't like any type of law enforcement in the game, hence why we don't have any other outfits for Leon. You could argue that um, Jill's, like, stars uniform is that of a police officer, though. And, I mean, Leon's job is he's a federal agent, so he's technically still an officer. Just has a really big um, jurisdiction because he's a federal agent. At least he used to be. Wants to be your friend. Hello, Kyle. My friends list is super full on the uh, PlayStation. Speaking of PlayStation, what in the world is going on with multiverses? Does anybody know? It seems like after Kevin passed away, the game just kind of, well, didn't really stick around very long either. All right, so let's explore this city. Oops. Roads aren't very big here. Oops. Kind of hard to steer this thing. Hi, how's it going? I haven't played Multiverses since uh, Marvin the Martian came out. Can you climb on the roofs and stuff? Uh-oh. I would have thought the city would be a lot bigger, though. I mean, it seems like you don't get to explore the city for very long because then the, uh... War fog comes in. Why didn't the person get in the car? Wow, everybody has vehicles. That's cool. <laughs> That's fun. Uh... So anyway, uh, back to the multiverses thing. Yeah, Disney Dreamlight Valley is doing a lot better than uh, multiverses. Where are you going, Geo? Okay. Well, this is new. A racetrack? Interesting. So, um, speaking of racing games, are you guys hyped for the uh, LEGO racing game? I am. I think it looks pretty dope. I'm still kind of surprised that it survived, though. 
There were a lot of LEGO games that were canceled the past, like, two to three years, so... It's amazing to me that that LEGO uh, racing game survived. Not only did it survive, but it changed hands from uh, WB Games and uh, Traveler's Tales to uh, 2K. I wonder if 2K is going to be the new LEGO developer now. I don't know. So much for this ride. Lego Incredibles killed the Disney Lego dream. Lego Incredibles was a fun game, though. Oh, this car is going to die soon. Oh wait, no, I have tons of gas. Fine. I just... the car doesn't have a lot of stamina. Enemy. Enemy somewhere. Whoops. Actually, I think we have a bad guy sitting in our back seat. I can't tell though. I mean, I heard you say that Samurai Jack and someone else were going to be in uh, multiverses, but I spoke with some former leakers, and I mean, they didn't really have anything to report on the game anymore. They kind of moved on to other games, because there hasn't been much information about it anymore. Oopsies. Bet you he didn't say that coming. Whoa! Hey, what's up, Thanos? Bet you he didn't say that coming. Yeah. Alright, guys, you're close to 100 likes. Keep going. Tree! In the tree, in the tree! Yep, you guys are, uh, what is it? Like, three away? When Leon throws his mighty shield.
Ja. What's up? Trees! Ouch. These guys like to hang out on the trees. The tree's stronger? Hmm. Right back into the trees again. No. Next light goal is 120. That is correct. Good job, people. <laughs> 70 of 54. Somebody's got the car again. Back and slash. All right, looks like you guys might win this one. Three again. Uh, okay. That was weird. Ha! Huh. I did get some decent kills with the sword so far. Oh, first one's AFK. Ah! Level up. Nice. Samurai. Leon S. Kennedy. It dices. It slices. We are your favorite YouTubers. Thank you. Wait, what happened to my... Oh. I mean for that to happen. Nice! Good job, guys! Did anybody see Superman and Lois this week? No. Nice job! Getting the last kill. Good job.
I haven't been following up with uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League um, very much, Clayton, because I'm not super into it. I don't really like live service games, and uh, I have no idea when the game's going to drop. So I haven't... My focus right now has been on, like, Nintendo stuff, Legend of Zelda, uh, hearing rumors about that game, and, um, you know, Street Fighter VI, Tekken. Those things interest me a lot more right now. Even the upcoming uh, LEGO, like, racing game has me more interested than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. It just... I don't know. I hate to say it, but I'm just kind of like... Ugh. There's been a lot of disappointing stuff that Warner Brothers has done the past couple years that I'm just kind of, like, tired as a fan. Um, I was correct about the whole Zack Snyder, uh, SnyderCon, though, thing. It's really cool that he raised all that, you know, money for that charity. But it was pretty much just a big publicity stunt for his, you know, SnyderCon and uh, the three-movie marathon, which is still pretty cool. But it doesn't really mean we're going to get much with Darkseid and stuff. Uh, even if those films are like super big financial thing, uh, I don't really see much happening with them, unfortunately. And I'm kind of devastated that the Shazam movie, even though it's a good movie, it's not going to do well. Because, uh, you know, it is what it is. Alright, let's do another one with Leon. You haven't played a Tekken game since six or since three. <laughs> Did my contacts tell me what happened with Batman? No. They're being like really tight lipped on things because there's a lot of leaks that are happening at Warner Brothers. And they don't want to get the leaks tra back, uh, traced back to people. Also, I haven't asked. I could ask, but I don't really care. If it was like a, a big Arkham game or something, I would be very interested in it. And I'd probably, you know, risk certain things, but... It's a... Uh, it's a live service, like... I don't even know how to explain what type of game it is. It's like a live service, third-person shooter type game. Basically. I don't really, that's, you know, with my DC superhero games, I prefer them more like, you know, as either brawlers, fighting games, action adventure games, sometimes point and click games DC excels with, and, you know, um, RPGs. But I don't know how I'm going to feel about the whole shooter thing. I'm going to play it and I'll cover it, but I'm not really going to get super invested into it. You know what I mean? People like different genres of games. I don't really go out of my way to learn about the newest Call of Duty or um, Medal of Honor or whatever. I'm just not really big into third-person shooters, first-person shooters, that kind of stuff. And that pretty much is essentially what the Justice League game is for me. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I also feel the same as John Doe. Like, it's Kevin's last performance as Batman that we know. And uh, if the game doesn't do well, that to me is like... Mm, it's not that it'll ruin Kevin's legacy as a character, but it's like you really want your last performance to be amazing. And if your last performance is amazing in a lackluster game, that's just depressing. I hate to say it, but, you know. The only win that Warner Brothers had in video games uh, so far has been Hogwarts. The Harry Potter franchise did better than most, you know, superhero games. Which are usually a big draw for uh, DC, and they just... Gotham Knights was just kind of meh. 
I, I have a feeling that uh, Suicide Squad is just going to be kind of meh. It's going to have a lot of hype around it. You're going to have, like, your signature DC hype channel saying it's the best thing since pre-sliced bagels. You know? And then when the game, after their NDA is over, and they've made their content, then they'll be like, oh, you know, the game was just kind of average, but... They'll wait six months before they really start, like, saying anything about the game. That's how they usually do things. Those guys are creatures of habit. They always wait. They uh, butter up the game for, like, a year to six months before release. And then afterwards, once they get a chance to play it, make their content, then they start to sing a different tune about the game. So. It's hard to, you know, really trust them as, like, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it, it's hard to see them as trustworthy with their, you know, intel about the game because they always flip. Every game that they hype up is the best game ever. Always. To them. And then the next game that comes out is the next big thing or whatever. Because they have to do that in order to keep their audience. And also, if they really spoke their mind, then they wouldn't get these deals with Warner Brothers, etc. So. Did somebody die? Or. No, oh, okay. Well, I'm going. I'm going! Uh oh. Part of me, Clayton, is hoping that Snyder does announce something. Like, maybe an animated movie or something, because it would be the perfect opportunity for him to seize, like, more DC fans and get them hyped up about some DC projects, because it doesn't really seem like general audiences are too on board with what's going on with uh, DC films right now. Case in point, when James Gunn announced, like, his Superman Legacy thing that he'd be directing it, Zack Snyder's uh, weird teasing announcement... Um, full Circle got more attention and more eyes on it than the reveal of the director of Superman Legacy. And they're probably going to cast Superman, like, soon. And that's not even going to have a lot of people's attention toward it. Like, it, it's not that James Gunn was a bad pick to redefine, you know, the next ten years of DC movies or whatever, but uh, Zack Snyder's still a very big film entity, so to not utilize him might come back to bite DC, you know, a couple years from now. Like, DC solo movies will be fine. Like, they're independent, like, solo projects, like Matt Reeves' uh, extensive Batman universe is going to do just fine. Because he's Matt Reeves, and it's not connected to the DC shared universe, so. But some people are starting to get more invested into what they call the, the Snyder universe with... Um, Captain Marvel, or not Captain Marvel, sorry, Shazam, and uh, select theaters are going to get the, what do you call it, the Snyder Cut or something. So, I don't know. It's just weird to see, like, all this stuff not really working out, you know? It's kind of tiring. Between this and the whole DC Comics, like, fiasco with their comic books the past two years now, I'm just kind of, like, tired. I'm still showing up to some events or whatever, so to speak, you know, to root for the home team, but I'm yawning in the stands. So I'm not really wowed by anything just yet. And I was hoping Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League would be that game that would, you know, really start to energize me for DC content again, but for the time being, it's a Wonder Woman game if that ever comes out. <laughs> Uh, I just, the only thing that I want to use my industry context about is I want to know what's going on with Traveler's Tales. If 2K now has the Lego license, supposedly, then that means, um, Traveler's Tales is probably done. Oops. Oh, I can't get back up. Did you already get the person on the roof? Oh, you did, okay. Good job. Uh... Enemy! Enemy! Enemy in the car!
Nice shot, guys. Nice shot. Well done, well done. Good job. Anyone want to make s'mores? Campfire was just provided, right? Shame we had to blow that car up, though. Sniper! Where are they? In the trees again? In the trees? Where you at? The beach, uh, the boathouse? Nah, Clayton, uh, the only thing that's really on my mind right now is the Power Rangers reunion. I think that's the only pop culture thing that I'm really interested in, and... Stupid chicken. Whoa! Ah, oh, shotgun. Yeah, the Power Rangers thing is... Not the Cosmic Fury, the Mighty Morphin reunion thing. That one's got the wheels in my head moving quite a bit. So I'm excited about that. That's like the only really big project. And the Mario movie that I'm really uh, hyped about. And some games. that 36 to 24 so the uh, spider Gwen player uses a shotgun so keep an eye out for her ouch I hope that the Power Rangers special does well so that we can get more, like, mature-themed Power Rangers, either specials or shows. I want it to be the biggest hit possible for Netflix. I think that for what they did with the special, they did a good job. Even though they couldn't secure, like, ASJ and uh, Jason David Frank and uh, Amy Jo, at least they do their characters justice at the beginning of the special. Even if they appear as, like, you know, helmeted or whatever. It's still better than nothing, so... Because you can't do... A 30th anniversary special where you kill one of the original team members and not have the original team present. Like, that just doesn't work. So, it would make sense why they have to bring Rocky and Kat in after Trini dies. And after Tommy, Kim, and uh, Jason end up being either... Missing in action, or something happens. Because the trailer kind of gives away that Alpha recruits um, Rocky and Cat, who aren't really aware of the situation. Um, but I do hope that Jason, Tommy, and Kimberly will at least have like some type of spoken stuff happen when Trini dies. Like I think it would be really weird and somber to have like the leader of the Power Rangers not say anything. When one of his dearest friends gets, like, blown up in front of him. I think that would just be really creepy. You know? So, I, I hope they have, like, some type of impersonators to say... Like they did with, um... The Dino Thunder Rangers and the, uh... Beast Morpher special. Like, even though it wasn't the original actors who played them... The Dino Thunder Rangers at least spoke a little bit. You know? It wasn't, like, muted cameo. They had at least one or two lines. Otherwise, it's just weird and creepy to have the original characters present and they don't say anything. And only have, like, two of the actors who return for the special to voice any of the lines of the original uh, party members when Trini dies or something like that.
Ups. I didn't actually think I was going to get him. These guys are catching up. Weapons free, go get him. Finding anybody yet? Somebody's building. Ah! They found me. Um, Trini's daughter is going to become the new Yellow Ranger. They already let that slip a long time ago, like when they were doing uh, post production or something like that. That's not a secret. Although Trini's daughter has a few screws loose. Um, she wants revenge, which is something the Power Rangers never do. So she is just so bent on killing Rita. And Power Rangers, remember what Zordon says. Zordon was like, a uh, ranger must never go on the offense. A Power Ranger's mission is to defend the humans, defend, like, humanity. Never supposed to use your powers for personal gain or anything like that. So Trini's daughter, like, her arc is going to be basically learning how to use her powers for something that's not selfish. And it's, you know, it's horrible that her mom gets killed, but, you know, I, I like that. I like that we're going to see, like, ow, some type of um, more human-like rangers than we've ever seen before. Like, and stakes, I mean, you know. For most of the special, there's only going to be four rangers. Because Jason, Tommy, and Kim are missing. They have to bring Cat and Rocky in. There is no Yellow Ranger until probably near the end of the, the special. Yellow Ranger will appear at the beginning for like maybe five minutes, and then Trini will get blown up. Or whatever. And then uh, Min's daughter will be like trying to, to get the ranger powers or something like that. But uh, it's going to take a lot for them to make her the Yellow Ranger. It's kind of like, you know that arc in uh, Batman Forever where Bruce Wayne didn't want to make Robin uh, or um, make uh, Chris O'Donnell Robin because he had a lot of anger and was planning on killing Two-Face. And uh, he had to trust that Robin was going to do the right thing when the time came. That's kind of where they're going with this story from what I've heard. And it, it's definitely more mature. It's, it's not like the whole death of Kendrick's thing in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. Like, this is... This, this has a lot of stakes and weight to it. Like, very few Rangers have actually died in the line of duty, and, you know, when Trini dies, it's gonna change the whole... Assuming this is, you know, successful, it's gonna change the, the Ranger lore to where, like, a Ranger can actually be killed in action. And you're gonna see it happen. It's not like she's gonna be killed off-screen and, oh, the Rangers are dealing with that. Like... You'll see her die, and then um, you probably won't have a funeral because they don't have a lot of the original actors involved. So it would make sense to kill off Trini and then do like a time skip of like a couple months or something. I don't think it would be a good idea to show like a funeral like the Black Panther did and stuff like that. I think they should just like kill off the character and then like have some time lapse a little bit. Maybe a few weeks, months, I don't know. All right, this is going to be the last one with Leon, and then we'll get to some Claire, I think. Yeah, I heard about the Legend of the White Dragon uh, releasing in theaters. I don't know what theaters it's going to release in, though. As far as I know, Bat and the Sun have never really had that type of film budget, and I know some of those guys. Back when they did a lot of um, fan, like, Batman films, which were fantastic, but the only time their stuff ever aired in a theater was, like, Aaron's stuff ended up in, like, one of those indie film festivals a couple times, but 
to have it released in theaters across the U.S., I don't see that happening. Like, JDF didn't have that much money. Aaron doesn't have that much money. So I don't know how they're going to do that. And Hasbro can't be really keen on the idea. Although, I do think that... The only thing I'm going to say about the whole, like, Green Ranger and the special... Um... I, I don't know if it's necessarily done in poor taste because it was done when JDF wasn't, you know, gone yet. Because, I mean, they replaced Jason and, and Amy Joe or Austin and Amy Joe who couldn't do the special, but their characters are still present. Like, at, you know, a certain part in the story. Same thing with Tommy's character. And, in fact, I mean, it's not really a secret that they get kidnapped or whatever happens to them, depowered or turned into figurines or something. Because basically what this special is, is um, more or less like the Shattered Grid event. Instead of Lord Draken, you have Robo Rita going around abducting rangers. And stealing their powers and putting them into like little dolls or something like that. You can see the different ranger keys in uh, the new um, moon base. And Jason, Tommy, and Kim are like top left corner. And you also have like TJs in space dude got taken down and there's gonna be a lot of ranger like form things you're gonna see in the background of the moon base because essentially rita robo rita is gonna be very successful until the mighty morphin rangers defeat her eventually but there's gonna be a lot of stakes involved with this special like, it's gonna be pretty intense but i i think that you know green ranger fans are kind of getting up and arms a little bit too much when um the special was already done before you know and, and filmed before he passed away. So, I mean, it's not like they included that stuff in poor taste. It was already planned to be in it. And they did ask him to be in it. There were two different specials that apparently were going to happen originally. Yay. Uh, one of the 30th anniversary things that if JDF said yes to, it was going to be a special only about the Green Ranger, basically. Uh, and what they ended up doing when JDF said he didn't want to be a part of it, um, they had to rewrite everything, and they basically used an idea that David Yost had for his Power Rangers Quantum Continuum, which I guess David was okay with, because a lot of the story elements for the Power Rangers Once and Always, if you look at it, if you look at the plot leak, or not the plot leak, if you look at the plot synopsis and then you compare it to David Yost's personal mature rated Power Rangers um, quantum continuum for the Mighty Morphin, it's almost identical. Just like basically um, the original plan for the 30th anniversary was to focus around the Green Ranger being much older and uh, having to work with his old team again, but he was going to be the focus of the special. Because that's what always happened when Tommy was involved with these things, is he would be like the, the center. What's good about the, the new thing is you're going to have the focus of the Ranger team instead of just like the one big Ranger actor. So David and, and Walter are going to be like the, the big returning veteran Rangers from, like, the original, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and then the replacements of Rocky and Cat will be in it to represent, you know, the later seasons of Mighty Morphin. And it's like, everybody gets, like, a bit more of a focus than whenever JDF uh, did the specials. If you go back and you watch a lot of the things that he was in, his character was always, like, the front and center of all these storylines. Um, it wasn't really about the... Mighty Morphin team as a whole, it was about, you know, either the White Ranger or it was about the Green Ranger and stuff like that. Uh, Master Morpher, things like that. So, um, even though he's no longer with us, I think that the 30th anniversary special focusing on the Mighty Morphin team as a whole and how they have to deal with the tragedy of losing their Yellow Ranger as well as, you know, saving the world when they're much older. That's a very unique and interesting story, you know? So I hope they pull it off. But it does feel like they're basically doing a live-action version of the Shattered Grid event, except instead of Lord Draken, you have Robo Rita doing the same thing, trying to go 
throughout the Ranger multiverse and time travel and try to kill Power Rangers before they became Rangers. That's pretty much what the Shattered uh, of Grid thing was about. Lord Draken was going by and, you know, killing uh, Ranger teams and only taking some of them to steal their powers. Uh, you know, and trying to build this massive device or something, I don't know. And Rita is also building a massive device that's fueled by ranger powers or something. I don't know. I think it's going to be fun, though. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. When I talk a lot about something, it means I'm excited about it. I've been talking about Power Rangers now for the past, like, 30 minutes, so I'm pretty psyched. I hope it's really good. I really, really do. I mean, the fact that we're getting Walter back is amazing. But the only thing I don't like... I mean, I haven't corrected any people on Twitter because Twitter people are weird. But a lot of people are like, because of the, the way that our culture is right now, that's why they decided to make Zack the leader. It's like, Zack was always second in command. The chain of leadership was always Zack. Uh, it went, Jason was the leader, Zack was second in command. And then Tommy would have been like, uh, third in command or second. It all depended. And in fact, when you go and you look at the, the Zoo Ranger uh, 2 footage, the Black Ranger from the Super Sentai show was the second in command. Like, uh, you had the Red Ranger and the Black Ranger were um, the, the chain order of leadership for the, um, for the Zoo Rangers. And then, of course, because Power Rangers was based on that Super Sentai show, um, you know, the Black Ranger, of course, has that, you know, leadership aspect to him. So it's always been kind of there. So it just shows that people weren't really paying attention to the Mighty Morphin show. Uh, Tommy wasn't necessarily, like, second in command until, like, probably the second season. Like, he was the dude who was called in to help out. Like, Jason would fight a monster solo sometimes and Zack would work with the other four. But if you go back and you watch the first and second season when Zack's around, he does call a lot of the shots in the field. When Jason's, like, either indisposed or he's somewhere else. Like, Zack's always there to, um, you know, help the other rangers. So it's not really a surprise to me that he would be, um, you know, the leader of this special. Walter being who he is, it, it wasn't, you know, a factor. It's like, it just, you go back to the researching Power Rangers and you can see that. Oh, I jammed. Um, I I don't really know a lot about the the new Fortnite. I like this. I mean, it's cool and everything. Oops. Ow. Thought I could sneak up to them. It didn't really work. Uh, this team likes to snipe a lot. They like to get up really high. So just uh, bear in mind with that, guys. I'm finding a lot of them on top of buildings inside trees. Or on top of trees. So you might have to play their game against them and, and uh, out-snipe them. But this team is really good. Oh, I'm out. Shoot. I was out. Dang it. Darn.
Wow, that person has like a bright red suit. It's hard to see them. When you're shooting at, uh, shooting them against the orange trees, they kind of blend in. Jeez. Yeah, we're not going to beat this team. These guys are really either coordinated or just very good in general. Ah! Yikes, yikes, yikes. Whoa, what just happened? I phased right through the... Nah! I don't even know if that was close. Nope. Bummer. Alright, let's get Claire in here. Da, 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 da. Some Claire action. There we go. I guess give Claire the keys. There we go. Alright, Claire. Claire is uh, Chris's sister, yep. Correct. <laughs> Time to get in gear. Uh, we're gonna set up the Dragon Ball stream now for tomorrow. Whoops. That's a problem. We don't want to do that. Okay, so we got the Dragon Ball stream set up for tomorrow. I have no idea what I'm doing for a YouTube short tomorrow. No idea. Mobilize your community for you just want some of that fan funding YouTube. Whoa. Mm -hmm. You thought Claire and who were in a relationship? about They make this city look a lot bigger in the trailers. There's that samurai guy. Like, Mega is big, but it's not as big as you think it is. I, I thought actually a lot of Fortnite was going to be this big massive city. But this city is just like, I don't know. Decent sized. 
I thought it was gonna be like a bigger part of the map or something. When I first saw it, I was like, oh wow, they're really doing something different. They're going all urban. It's like, nope. <laughs> Do I have Thanos? Uh, I don't know. I might. Whoops. Surf's up, dudes. The, uh, oops. Is that a bus? What is that? Oh, that is a bus. Oh, darn. No, you know what? That car's toast. I'll take this one. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna make it out of here. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it! Whoops! Yeah, that was good. The city's gonna expand as the uh, season progresses. How long has the season been going now, uh, John? Is that snake eyes? No. Snake eyes is in this, though. I was really hoping they were going to add more G.I. Joes in this, but they never did. They only have snake eyes. They don't even have storm shadow, do they? I don't think so. Somebody threw a chicken. Mm -hmm. This just means the game feel really loud for some reason. Well, at least we don't have that weird glitch that we had. Uh, the last time I looked at Fortnite, where the sound was all off. That was weird. The sound was, um... All messed up. R.I.P. Luke from 2023 to 2023, huh? I don't really get that, but okay. Make more sense that Claire would be riding on a um, like pickup truck like this, getting out of Raccoon City, compared to like a fancy, um, you know, fancy ride. Motorcycle, it is. Oh yeah, I like the motorcycles. Oops. A little getting used to though. Whoops. Do they have a hard turn with this one? Fire, aim. That is incredibly dangerous, Thanos. 
Oh, that's their version of turning, okay. Whoa! I mean to do that. Ouch. All right. Whoa. Well, that's a little different, Snow World. Thanos in a hot tub. Okay. Uh, just so you know, Thanos, we're going to run out of gas soon. And we ran out of gas. Is that one of ours, or is that somebody else? Ice Palace. Looks like something out of World of Warcraft. <laughs> or, uh, what's the name of that game? Not Warcraft, uh, Destiny. Kind of. Enemy here. Got him. There's probably more of them here. That'd be my guess. Unless that was just a straggler. Or a scout. Clear. Nobody up on the roof, except for me. Below. BG Shine, what time you want to do your ultimate tomorrow? Oh, she's got the Captain America shield. Thanks, horse person. Somebody with a sword. Oh, it's one of mine. Shoot. Good job, guys. Hmm. Oh, we're still behind. Wow.
Oh, that's Thanos. Coming behind us. Oh, Leon got me. So, 8.30 then? Wow, thank you, Clayton. I'll read it in just a sec, dude. Oh, the MI6 bathroom fight? Dude, that's a great fight scene. Nice pick, Clayton. That's a really cool fight scene. Mmm, my favorite fight scene in a movie? Uh, I'm probably gonna go old school. I really like Jackie's, um, Rumble in the Bronx fight scene. Where he's using the refrigerators to beat people up. Oh, I'm a bad shot. What's another good fight sequence that I remember? In terms of just raw, brutal uh, cinema, the warehouse scene in BBS. <laughs> oh, nuts! It was closer. Closer! We bought the farm, yeah. Thank you, Clayton. Super Chat really helped out a lot. Appreciate that. Uh, I know, the warehouse scene in BVS is really cool. Jet Li Dojo Fist of Legend fight sequence. Yeah, that's a good one. Ouch. You love the 90s? 90s movies were great. Oh, Chris Redfield, huh? Older Chris. Yeah, VG, I'm in the East Coast. So it is uh, 12.59 a.m. for me right now. Almost 1 a.m. YouTube's got this stream view lock, so as soon as it hits 600 views, I'm calling it. Otherwise, it's like the amount of energy that I'd have to invest to get anywhere close to 1,000 views. I can't do it tonight. I'd really like to get my Power Ranger video done for tomorrow. Like, I really want to finish that. Uh, yes, I've seen Tim Drake's Robin costume in Titans. I like part of it. I don't like the fingerless gloves, though. It defeats the whole point of, you know, a detective. Not that Tim's all that smart in the Titan show anyway, but, you know, leaving your fingerprints all over town is not really a smart thing to do.
It's similar to the style of Robin costume that Tim Drake had in his uh, 2021 run, 2022. Did you feel bad for DC Films when you were watching the Avengers Endgames in theaters? Um... No. MCU movies were just like fun, light, you know, entertainment. DC films were like dark gothic operas. I mean, they both had different things. Um, I prefer more darker storytelling and, you know, so I, I appreciated DC films for what they were. Now I don't know what type of tone we're going to get with DC films um, with James Gunn. Because James Gunn is, I guess he's kind of middle ground in terms of like, uh, comic book tone. Like, his Suicide Squad movie was dark, but it was also, like, very bright. Like, the story was really, really edgy and dark, but it was filmed in a way that it was, like, very comic booky. So, I think that's the style of, we're gonna see for, like, his Superman movies and some of his other stuff. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that how on board I am. I liked his Guardians of the Galaxy stuff more than his Suicide Squad movie. Uh. But I did... I remember going to see BVS and I liked it. Uh, the only time that I didn't like... I saw the Justice League, I liked it for the first time, and then... When I saw it a second time, I was kind of, like, disappointed. Because that year, Marvel did do better. Like, Justice League was, like... It was a, a big high for me at first when I saw it. Because, like, oh my gosh, live-action Justice League. And then when I saw it a second time with Amber... And we both were just kind of, like... Uh... Because <laughs> the second time we saw it... I think we saw it three times. Whoa. But the... Ah, sword. The second time that we saw it, I was pointing out to Amber the difference between Josh Whedon and Zack Snyder's, like, filming. So... In fact, it was very easy to basically play a game when we were in the theater to, you know... Uh... Go, that's Zach, that's Josh, that's Zach, that's Josh. Because you had two different directors, and there was two different tones. Also, Bruce Wayne's wig changed so many times throughout the movie that it was just kind of like, when you were aware of it, you were just like, uh, what? Sometimes Bruce looked like really muscular, and sometimes he looked like, uh, not a chubby dad bod, but... You could see a difference. Oh. Huh. Guess the dude ran away. Oh no, he didn't. Doom guy, doom guy! Shoot. go. Guess he left. So I'll try going up then. Oh. Oh, I was shooting over their head. I'm getting tired. Yeah, it was... I think that was the only time in the theater where I was just kind of like... Thinking... 
they should have just either gotten rid of all of Zack Snyder's footage for the Justice League, or they should have just had, like, literally um, Josh Whedon do the entire movie over, because when you were watching the movie, the Justice League wasn't a war against Steppenwolf, it was a war between two different directors' visions. And it got very distracting the more times you watched it. Like, I can't even watch the 2017 um, Justice League movie anymore because, like, I nitpick it so much. Like, I love um, the Snyder Cut. Like, that is a, an amazing Justice League movie. I was very happy with it. I'm very sad that, you know, that story is not going to continue. But I didn't love all the aspects of where Zack wanted to take the Justice League. I didn't like the idea of him and Lois having a love child. You know, Bruce and Lois. I thought that was stupid. Um, I didn't like uh, them killing off Dick Grayson or Jimmy Olsen and stuff like that. So, you know, Zack's stuff was always a mixed bag for me. But I could appreciate his type of storytelling, the way he shoots his movies. I think the man is a very talented director and I look forward to Rebel Moon. But I just, you know, when you do a property that is owned by a studio, like a, a big, you know, corporation like Warner Brothers or DC or something like that, when you see these characters, um, sometimes directors in the studios have different ways they want to go about things. And Zack is kind of a rebel. Zack wanted to do his own vision and was under the impression that's what DC wanted too. And then when people got cold feet from BVS, which didn't, fail I mean no it didn't do a billion but 800 million or 860 million is nothing to sneeze at especially with the recent you know comic book films a lot of them not doing well like Ant-Man and Shazam and Black Adam and stuff like that uh, none of them are doing Spider-Man numbers right so I mean 800 million is is not like a loss like people were saying they were comparing it to Marvel numbers which the Marvel machine was like in full gear um, so, I don't know who that guy is, but he's dead. I think that might have just been a bounty. Oh, it's a bounty. Never mind. Part of me would still like Zack to do either something animated or a video game or something. Not that sword person again! Thank you. That sword person has been following me around quite a bit. Not not a fan of them hounding me. I don't know. Uh, Clayton, would you like... If, if Zack was given the opportunity... Let's say the studio, James Gunn, says you can't do an Elseworlds um, live-action movie, but you can continue your story as either a video game or an animated movie. What would you rather see? Would you rather Zack Snyder's Justice League be like a video game? Adapted with his story? Or would you want it to be like a, you know, a series of animated projects? And the, the same goes in the chat for you guys too. Would you, would you want that as well? Zack's vision continued as a video game for the Justice League. Dark, gritty, you know, a post-apocalyptic thing, or an animated movie. Zelda says animated movie. <laughs> I say video game. I think that would be a really interesting video game. And Warner Brothers could compete with the likes of uh, the last Ronin, like, Ninja Turtles game that's in development. Because dark, gritty storylines for DC work really well with, like, you know, more edgy, um, not lighthearted stuff. Sometimes DC is known as Dark Comics. DC. Right now, DC stands for Disposable Comics, or Depressing Comics, or Doomed Comics.
Oh, what's up, dude? Thanks. None of those Zack visions was meant for the big screen. Snyder cultists would run down WB headquarters if it was in poor effort. Live action, that's it. Ah. So you're saying that Snyder fans would, like, not be okay with either an animated movie or a, uh... Yeah. The only problem with doing it in live action is you know Ben's not going to come back ever. We don't even know what, what Henry's going to do now. Surprise! Trying to be all sniper-like. I saw you. Oh. I actually came up to that guy pretty quiet-like, too. He didn't even know I was there. I wish I had a better shot, though. I'm, I'm not a very good shot. I'm not the best at these, like, um, shooter games. It's my version of a community stream, though, because I get to play with some of you guys. And you guys seem to like this game, so... But I, you know, I apologize I'm not better at the game. I've never improved. How I play this game is the same way I played it almost six years ago, or how many years I've been covering it. Ah! Whoa! Whoops! I think Zack could make a pretty good video game story for DC. I do want to say something funny about uh, James Gunn, though. Like, I think that it was hilarious that he said that Ben Affleck um, was on board with uh, doing a DC project, and then Ben Affleck, like, a few months later, doesn't hesitate to be like, I think James Gunn is a great guy, but I would never direct a movie under his, like, DC watch. Like, that to me was kind of hilarious. Because it's just like, Ben in general is just probably done with superhero films now. Even if The Flash does a billion, which I don't think it will. I think the Flash will be lucky if it makes like five, six, seven hundred million. I don't see it doing that well. No offense. Surprise! Ow. Option on Superman Returns, Superman Returns 2. Superman... Opinions on Superman Returns, Superman Returns 2. What are those, Clayton? Are you talking about, um... Brian Singer's Superman Returns? Or is this something else I don't know about? Because I've been out of the loop for about, uh... A while. I haven't really been following DC Hardcore for uh, at least a month or two. Between Amber's hospitalization and then Amber's surgery and my mother-in-law passing away and us almost getting evicted and all kinds of crazy stuff, I just haven't uh, really been paying attention to the entertainment world as much. Oh, that's one of my guys, sorry. Sorry, Chris! Brother Chris! Whoa! Wow. Superman Returns. The Brandon Ralph film? I... I want to say I liked part of Superman Returns. I didn't like him fighting a giant kryptonite island. I thought that was stupid. <laughs> why, why was he fighting a giant kryptonite island? Uh... 
It would have been cooler if he fought Brainiac or uh, Mongol, like Brian Singer wanted. I don't know why they settled on Lex Luthor in a Kryptonite Island. That, to me, was kind of weird. I had no problem with Superman and Lois having a kid. You know, that added, like, kind of a modern drama to it a little bit. Um, Superman leaving the planet to deal with something. It would have been nice to see what he left the planet to deal with. Um, but I thought the movie was okay. I wanted to see a sequel. I, I saw that movie in theaters and I was like, oh, this isn't bad. Um, the problem when I saw it in theaters, though, is I kind of wanted the Superman Returns to be connected to, um, Christopher Nolan's Batman universe, but both directors said that the Superman and Batman in their movies were in separate continuities, or they would never meet, or whatever. So, it was always kind of depressing when you had, like, these Batman or Superman movies pop up, and then the directors would always be like, never even open to the possibility of the characters interacting. Whether it be Christian Bale or... I think Brandon Routh was interested, but... That was always hard. What I don't understand, why isn't Lex just didn't get arrested by the military raiding the island? I know, right? There was a lot of really weird stuff in that movie. Alright guys, this is going to be my last one. Oh, don't even watch the Gotham Knight show. If you want that show to get canceled, just don't pay attention to it. Anyway, Clayton, before I forget, man, you are the top donator of the day. Thank you very much. Keeping this channel on the air with your generous donations. Camwings Let's Plays is made possible thanks to fan funding like you, Clayton. Thank you very much. All Lex had was a couple bodyguards. Yeah. I think it would have been really cool to see, like, Superman fight, like, Metallo or Brainiac in that movie or something. Um, I know Brainiac was the plan for the, the second movie. But it's like, if the first movie would have done better, I'm sure we would have gotten the second one. But, um, it's, you know, with DC, <laughs> with DC, it's a lot of what ifs. You know, it's like DC fans, they talk about all the, the cool things that could have been. Whereas Marvel fans, they get to say, well, this did happen. DC fans are like, well, this is what a director wanted to do, and this almost happened, and this script was really good, but... Yeah. Marvel, good or bad, they release their movies. DC gets gun-shy, and they cancel them, and they remake them, and reshoot them, and... Uh, I don't know. I have really, really considered... No, I've never considered not being a, a, a Batman fan anymore. I can't do that. I, I love the character too much. But, um... I... Definitely consume more Japanese media... The past, like, four or five years than I ever did previously. I was always a big fan of anime. But, I mean, I literally devour so much anime. Instead of, like, reading comic books or watching a lot of uh, Western superhero CW shows. I, I do a lot of anime. A lot. In fact, there this season, the April season is going to roll around. And um, I have uh, a lot of shows I'm going to be watching. At least I was looking at Crunchyroll and High Dive's lineup and stuff like that in Amazon. It'll be pretty busy because there's almost like a, a a new show every day for like the next. There's like even like Monday or Tuesday has like two or three shows that I'll be watching that look interesting. So it's gonna be a lot of anime. No, I think we're good. Okay, yeah, this is the last one.
Go all out, guys. Win this for Claire. If you can. What? Oh, you're trying to do a high five or something. I'm just. Oh, you're doing the um, John Cena thing, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of winding down a little bit. I just don't have the energy to push for likes or shares or anything. I'm just kind of out of it. Was Robert joking about Pirate Batman or was he serious? I have no idea, Clayton. I want to say he was joking. You know, we obviously don't know the actor that well, but that was pretty stupid of him to say that. He might have just been trolling people. I think the funniest thing that Robert Pattinson said before he became Batman is he didn't realize how big Batman was. He said he was looking forward to play a character that didn't have as huge of a fan base as Twilight. <laughs> that, that was the funniest thing I've ever heard um, an actor say when they were cast for a part for like a, a major iconic character like Batman. Saying, like, I'm looking forward to um, working with a character that isn't as well known as the Twilight books. And I was just like, what? Just, he did not just say that. I mean, Batman was bigger than Twilight. He's more iconic than whatever the character is that Robert played in Twilight. But in, in uh, Robert's eyes, Twilight was a, a bigger property because of, like, you know how long he'd been doing it, and also, like, how much money that franchise made or whatever. But he hated every minute of it. Like, he did not like the Twilight thing. There are very few actors that I've seen actually dump on their uh, characters or their film that they're supposed to be promoting during their, um, you know, film promotional tour. He did it for Twilight, some of the later Twilight movies. Like, when people asked him certain questions, he made fun of it and said it was stupid. And Mark Hamill, for both The Last Jedi and, um, I don't even remember the name of the third movie now for Star Wars. That's how dead Star Wars basically is to me. I just don't care anymore. I used to be a huge Star Wars fan and then the, the new trilogies just kind of like killed it for me. I'm not as invested as Star Wars as I was probably 10, 15 years ago. <clears throat> but Mark Hamill trashed uh, both Star Wars movies that he was in. He did not like what Ryan, Ryan Johnson did and some other people. Like, even now, he still talks pretty badly about it. Because, you know, he's obviously... Disney will never work with him again anyway, so... Um... And I think deep down, um, Mark is also mad that they never incorporated the Mara Jade character, which uh, Mark Hamill actually did the audio. He, he was the um, narrator for those Star Wars books on tapes in the 90s for some of them. And he did uh, some with like the Mara Jade stories. And he really liked the character. Because when he was at conventions in the you know, the 90s or the early 2000s, and people would say, well, Luke didn't really... What what happens to Luke after, you know, Return of the Jedi? Like, Mark would always use reference to the, um, you know, the extended canon and talk about, like, how he had a wife and he had a kid named Ben and they did all this other stuff. So I think Mark was always devastated that they never did Mara Jade. Because, you know, it always looks like 
The film Luke doesn't find any happiness. He becomes like this grumpy hermit. You know, doesn't have a son. His nephew turns evil and goes down the path of the dark side. And Luke's like later years just kind of suck for him. Like in the Disney film canon. But the real Star Wars canon, Luke does a lot of exciting things throughout his whole life. And it's just a its a shame that Mark never got to play that character outside of, you know, providing the narration for a few books on tape based on Star Wars novels. He probably really wanted to play that version of the character because he got to see that character expand in ways that uh, George Lucas wasn't going to do in the movies. So... Now I don't know uh, how Mark feels about Luke as a character now because, you know, since those movies were made, that character's forever ruined for a lot of people. The people who grew up with the characters, um, additional adventures in books and video games and stuff like that, a lot of us are still fine, but people who solely knew Luke just from the movies, like, that character is forever ruined. And soon, so will Indy. So, eh, I don't know. I don't understand why people just want to keep destroying stuff that's fun. Doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. Ah, I got my first kill of this stream. Or, well, not this stream, this section of the stream. That's two. Two for me. Nothing else happening here. Nope, nobody following me. I thought they'd be following me for revenge or something. Nope. I hear shots. Hey, what's up, Thanos? <sighs> I don't know, you guys. I really, really, really want the rumors about Indiana Jones to be false. I really... I don't think I could handle it. I've seen too many of my fan favorite pop culture characters get ruined just within the past like six, seven, eight years. I, I can't handle another one of my like childhood heroes being utterly butchered by Hollywood again. Too much. I'm just thinking in my head, leave these fictional characters alone. And it's not just film, it's also TV and um, comic books. I've never seen a comic book company destroy a character that had 30 years of history in only two years. I've never seen that happen. Outside of Iceman. But I wasn't a huge X-Men fan anymore, so it didn't bother me. But to see what DC Comics did to Tim Drake, who was actually gaining in popularity again, and then just completely obliterated the character in less than two years. I guess that takes talent. I don't know. But I think that's the wrong kind of talent. <laughs> that's like a skilled assassin job or something. Nope, the rabbit's not gonna get vengeance! Ha ha! It's wabbit season. Hello. 31 to 11. Good job, guys. Good to job. Boy, 
boingy, boingy. Thank you. I think I'm just gonna use the um, the audio of that Tim Drake video that I made, and I'm just gonna do that whole like YouTube podcast thing for the O1 channel. Just have that like post that thing. It's like YouTube's gonna keep like preventing that video from you know. Uh, airing, so maybe because it's a new podcast thing, it'll... I don't know, maybe people won't pay attention to it as much. But the stuff that I said in my video is true. They changed Tim, they ruined the character, they ruined Stephanie, they alienated their fan bases, and nobody is really on board with the change except for, like, Twitter. And he's not even Tim Drake anymore. Doesn't act like Tim. All his mannerisms are different. How he dresses is different. It's crazy. He's Duckman to you? Oh, they're not going to call it yet? Oh, it's 52 to 26. I'm waiting for the rabbit to follow me. I've killed the rabbit like three times. I think the rabbit has a vendetta on me or something. Kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit. Wabbit. Can we play duos? No, I'm done. This is my last one. I haven't wrote in the time code. This is my last one. I'm going to try to call my wife in Illinois. See how she's doing. She fell asleep without taking her medicine. Oh no, the sound got messed up again. No! No, not this glitch again. Dang it. It happened. It happened again, you guys. It messed up again. Whatever. Whatever. I can't tell who's who. Oh, Spider Man's ours. Nice job, guys. Nah, Ghost Rider. I actually have to play the Resident Evil remake tomorrow. Um, Capcom wants me to... They wanted me to do it today, but I'm not doing it after this stream. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it in, instead of uh, the God of War stream. Yeah, the sound's all busted on this again. 
Maybe there's just something wrong with my version of the game. I don't know. No idea. But yeah, Resident Evil's right there. So, uh, you know, that's provided by Capcom, so I'll do that on my other channel in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed now, obviously. Yeah, the game messed up. Alright, so anyway, guys and gals, that's it, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, what was supposed to be the Leon thing, but, uh, it ended up being more. Because reasons. Uh, my Fortnite game is bugged again. Hooray. Enjoy your sleep. I mean, I'm going to do the best I can. Meow. Your uh, Dragon Ball stream is set up for tomorrow. Um, your 8.30 stream will be uh, a Mario Party 2 stream brought to you by VG Shine. And your 10.30 stream, I have no idea. No clue. Take care, everybody. Thank you again, Clayton, for uh, your generous donations tonight. And um, you guys rock. Take care, everybody. I will be streaming on the O1 channel around 10 in the morning. So if you want to hang out for Resident Evil, that's when it's going to be happening. Okay? All right, people. Uh, later.